Hello, welcome to the next part of our video. Kath and I are discussing self-control. Well, I, I was going to say there's also probably one fight slightly before that, and you've kind of touched on this, and that is the holding our hands up and saying, actually, yes, this is me. Yeah. This is what I do. Uh, and owning it and saying, and I want to be different. Yeah. Uh, and we go back to that phrase that you always talk about wanting to want to be different. Yeah. Uh, and for some people, they're in a place where, all right, I'm not harming anybody. Uh, and we go back to that, that first battle of God, would you show me? Would you begin to work in my life and would you help me to work out if there are things that I am doing and giving into that are not part of what you want me to yeah. be doing? Yeah. Uh, and so there's, that's kind of the, 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 the first battle that then takes us to that point, right, okay, this is me, hands in the air, I want to be different, I want to change, and then we go into the yeah. line in the yeah. carpet. You can't change if you blame somebody else. Yes. Even if someone's influenced you, even if someone's egged you on, even if you're, you're copying something that somebody else has done in your family, whatever it is, even if it was made to seem the most normal thing, there has to be a point of hands in the air, recognition, mm, this isn't right, and I've been doing it wrong. Yeah. Not they yeah. made me, or it's their fault, but it's me. And that's not always a pleasant place. That's quite painful, that, that realisation. And I think some people at that point want to just bury their head in the sand and, and are too embarrassed with God and with other people. There's a sense of feeling a failure. And again, we go back to God is love. The God that says, yes, I know you're not quite where you or I want you to be, but I love you mm. and I want to help you and I'm not rejecting you. I'm not ridiculing you. I'm not having a go at you. I'm saying together, let's begin to work this out. Mm. Together, let's move on. But I think far too many people fail because they think either it's not my fault or this is too difficult, or, oh, my life, God, what does he think of me? Mm. And so we'll try and do it in our own strength and won't invite God and others to help them. And there mm. is that fear of ridicule. There is that fear of what will everyone think mm. of me mm. that I think stops some people, or they're doing it in their own strength on their own. Mm. And I think on your own is incredibly difficult to be doing this. Mm. So move us on to the next point. So we've, we've had these two. No, point number three. So, I just want to put in a little power of, a little thing just to say, because I'm really so aware of this, that, that, that I don't want anyone to think we've got it together. Oh, we most certainly haven't. And, and I'm, we're going to keep using your biscuit analogy, but I, I have exactly the same issues. You only have to look at my tummy to know that I struggle with weight, I struggle with self-control on eating exactly the same. And I don't want anyone to think, oh, these are some kind of special people look at us yeah. <laughs> we are special but not yeah. in that way <laughs> but but also that i need to say this and i don't want it to be discouraging the, the longer i've been a christian i would say the more i'm aware of my sin mm, absolutely. because the more i'm aware of what jesus wants me to be like mm. and the more i've i i have to hold my hand i yeah. when i was a young christian i I, I wasn't that aware of the things I was doing wrong. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm quite, I'm quite glad that God does it that way. Because <laughs> if, <laughs> if he'd revealed everything, I'd have given up a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, but I'm much more aware. And so in, in, I feel more sinful now mm. than I did. Because mm -hmm. I'm battling m more things than I realise are not the the perfect, perfect that God wants me, and weight is one of them. But the flip side of that, are you more aware of who you are in God and how he sees you? Yes. So do you see that far more through the lens of love? Yeah, yeah. So there's a, there's a positive flip yeah. side to that, that the, yeah. more, the closer you get to God, the more you recognise, I'm, I'm not quite as like Jesus as, as I'd like to be, but God loves me. Yeah, and you're more aware of how wonderful Jesus yes. is, which is a comfort. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But we're not, we've not got this nailed. We're not no. perfect. No, we're good on talking about self-control because oh, we live yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> we understand how difficult Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. So the next stage is, yep. so you're dealing, perhaps we're dealing with something that is more comp is tricky. Yeah. So there are a number of things that are helpful to try and do. We've, we've established that it's, uh, we understand why God wants us to do it. We've established that we admit it, we own it, we confess it. We've established that we want to be different. Now, th maybe we're dealing with something that is quite ongoing. There are a number of things that can help. Um, a, a one is accountability. One is just being honest with somebody who we trust and saying, look, I am struggling with this area. 
will you, firstly, will you pray with me? Mm -hmm. And secondly, will you ask me how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And linked into that is if you can identify when it's the most likely that you're going to struggle. So can you ask me the next day or can you phone me that evening or, or, or whatever else? Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have to break the habit by somebody helping us. It may be that we need to say, I'm not going to go to that place. Mm. So there may be things in our life that we need to say, look, for the greater good, I'm going to stop listening to that music. Yeah. I'm going to stop going to that place. I'm going to stop meeting with that person. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get rid of this thing in my house. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lock my phone from this time in the day to another time in the day. I'm going to give somebody else the password and I'm not going to know what it is. So there are times when you decide what I really want to do is more important. So I'm going to make some ruthless steps. Mm -hmm. These aren't legalistic rules mm -hmm. that every Christian should do. Mm -hmm. These are things that you work out for me yeah. This is what I need to do. Yeah. Um, so uh, an example for me might be that I, I, you know, we talked about sometimes I think that one of my big fears, one of my big weaknesses is, is I don't want to let people down. I don't want mm -hmm. people think badly of me. I worked out before it happened that social media would kill me that I would be forever wanting to know what people thought about me mm -hmm. and that I would be forever trying to look it up and, and, and see. And, that I would, and so I don't have, I've never, ever looked at Facebook in my life. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on any of these things because I just know that it's unhealthy for me. Mm -hmm. And that's my decision that I've had to make. There are yeah. times when I feel left out. There are times when I think everybody's in on the joke and I don't know what the joke is. But I've worked out that for my spirituality, I don't think mm. I could handle social media. Mm. I just don't think it would do me any good. Mm. And I think I would be obsessed with my ego. I'd be worrying yeah. about what people thought about me. I'd be checking what they mm. thought about me all the time. Mm. And that would be really, really damaging. So when you can identify certain foods, not going to buy them, not going to have them in the, not going to have them on the shelf, not going to have them in the house. Uh, when you can identify maybe that, uh, take another big one, alcohol, maybe if you know that you can't stop after two drinks at the pub, then you say, right, well, I don't go to the pub. Yeah. Maybe if you know that when you're with this person, you always drink too much, you yeah. say, I'm sorry. You say to them, I'm sorry, when I'm with you, I'm not going to mm -hmm. drink. And if they say to you, well, that's rubbish, don't come out with us, then you know what kind of friend they Absolutely. are. Absolutely, yeah. And if they say, no, I'm going to help you have orange juices when you're with me. Mm -hmm. If you know that you'll always drink too much late at night, mm -hmm. then you, you make a decision to say, okay, I'm going to put the alcohol where I can't get it late at night. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm not going to have alcohol in the house. Maybe I'm only ever going to drink alcohol when I'm with friends. So it's mm -hmm. the opposite advice to the previous. It's being able to say, when, am, when does this habit hit me? And what do I need to do ruthlessly yeah. to get rid of it? Yeah. And linked to that, and I think we're maybe going back a step, but is the power, I think it picks up what you're saying, is the power of confession, mm -hmm. is the power of saying, Lord, I'm sorry, yeah. each time. Yeah. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm not accepting sin. I'm not accepting that we're doing something wrong, but saying, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm Jesus was asked, how many times will you, should you forgive? And he, he says, seven times, 77. In other words, hundreds of times, mm. hundreds of times. In other words, really, what he really meant was there's no limit. Yeah. And we need to understand that's the way God sees us. Mm. But we do need to say sorry and mm. keep coming back, keep being cleansed, keep being mm. confessing, keep acknowledging. And that has a power, mm. that the more we come to God and say, this isn't what I want, Will you help me? The, the more we can pull the line back from the hallway, yeah. back up the stairs. Yeah. The line may always be there. Mm -hmm. We may always be tempted. Mm -hmm. But as long as we're dealing with our thoughts, mm -hmm. that's better than mm -hmm. dealing with something that's got out of control. And one of the things I think about confession that's really good is, as you talked about, having someone that we're accountable to. 
Because when it's just us and we're thinking, I think we, we make it seem far worse in our minds. There's not somebody who's able to speak objectively in there. And there's some power about confessing something to somebody else and them saying, okay, together we're going to do this. And I think finding the right person to do that with is really, really important. Ideally a Christian. Ideally someone of the same sex. Ideally someone that's not struggling with the same thing that you are, but someone that you can trust, someone that you know, they've got my back. Mm -hmm. I know they're going to pray for me. I know they're going to pray with me. And I think you're so right about beginning to identify what it is for us, because it may be different for somebody else, uh, and it's a bespoke package in a sense for us. These are the things that I struggle with. These are the times or, or the things that trigger it for me. And then also having an agreement, I will get in touch with you if I'm struggling. I might send you a text and say, I might give in, would you just pray for me or would you phone me up or, or whatever it is. I know of other people, you talk about different things about being ruthless. I know of people that have struggled with pornography say that they've had a program put into their computer that then will send details of every website they've looked at to the person that they're being accountable with. Just so, firstly, they know somebody's watching, but secondly, the person that they're being accountable to knows, okay, they've maybe not been so great today. I'm going to get in touch. I'm not mm. going to have a go at them. I'm going to say, let's talk it through. Let's mm. work out what was behind that. The whole thing you don't want is someone that says, Kath, you're an absolute muppet for eating all of those biscuits. Kath, why did you do it? And why after one did you keep on going? Mm. Okay, so what was it? What could you do differently next time? Let's begin to work it out. Let's begin to pray into that. Let's prepare for that. But you need the right person. You need someone that isn't officious, that isn't going to throw the Bible at you, that isn't going to say, Kathy, you're a muppet, but says, you know, it's all right. God loves you. We start mm. again. Mm. God's a God of grace. Let's confess it. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to help us. And, and let's move on. It's finding that right person. Yeah, yeah. And talking about asking the Holy Spirit to help us, I think my experience is that most of us in our lives will have something that at a given moment of prayer and God just takes away. Yeah. So sometimes, so the things we battle with, I'd want to say that there will be some things that God just heals you of. Yeah. And you suddenly think, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. And it's really good to keep praying about that and asking for that. And that will happen to some of the things in our lives. And most people, I think, as a Christian, experience that of complete deliverance and it's no longer an issue. Mm -hmm. But I also know that at the same time, there will be something that we will battle all our lives. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's having that understanding that God does both. There are some things he says, I'm going to take this away from you and you'll be free. Yeah. And there are some things he says, this is going to be the thing that keeps you humble. Yeah. This is going to be a thing that you're going to keep having to trust me on. This is mm -hmm. going to be a thing you're going to keep having to come back to me about. Mm -hmm. And maybe because it's mm -hmm. connected to a, a strength. So if you take my ego and my anxiety about uh, worrying about what people think of me and whether I'm doing the right thing, I think that's a downside to my strengths. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ways in which it's a good thing. Yeah. And so I don't think God's ever going to take that away from me. i just got to manage it and deal with it. But on the, on the other hand, there are other things that as a young Christian I really battled with yeah. that as I prayed and had others pray with me, he just took away. Mm -hmm. So have that hope that both will happen. Yeah. No, I agree completely. Uh, when I was younger, I used to smoke. And uh, I tried to give up in my own strength many, many times. But the time that I said, okay, God, we need to do this, I need to give up, was one of the easiest things that I've, I've ever done. And you think, well, you can do that with the cigarettes. What about my eating? What about my 101 other things? But it, you're right. It isn't always that straightforward. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean to say that we're a failure. And this yeah. is the important thing. It doesn't mean to say, oh, well, he did that in them or, or he did that in that area of my life. There must be something wrong with me. That's not necessarily the case. We need to not give ourselves a hard time, but recognize that sometimes, like Paul talks about his thorn in the flesh, you could interpret that in lots of different ways, but there was something that he struggled with, mm -hmm. and he said, God didn't take it away from me. And I sometimes think, as you say, he just allows us to be human and to trust in him. Because if everything was taken away and was fantastic, I wouldn't need to trust in him. Mm -hmm. i become my own God. I'm fantastic. I'm in control. Everything's okay. But somehow he allows these things and says, I'm here with you. I will help you. 
but trust in me. Mm. And I don't always like that, but I see the wisdom and I, and I trust God in that. I think as well, something for me that's always important to say is that sometimes we get in our minds as a Christian community a hierarchy of um, the worst things to give into. And we do, you know, we probably put up there the worst things to give into is sexual sin. Now, sexual sin has quite often devastating consequences and a knock-on, so I'm not decrying that. But the way that people will view somebody that has done that, so you've got that, and then you've got gossip. And, and gossip and things like that, it's not much of a problem. It doesn't matter if somebody's not got that under control. That's wrong to have such a hierarchy. Mm. Do you want to mm. speak into that a little bit? Absolutely, yeah. I think that's it's really, really important that, that God simply wants us not to hurt ourselves or other people. And after that, there are no degrees. Mm. Uh, it, you, it, if we don't do it, we don't do it. And I don't think there are consequences on this life in terms of prison sentences and so on. That, yeah. that obviously, murder is worse than gossip. Yes. Because yeah. we need to protect other people, and, and, and there is a. But in terms of the way God sees it, and the way we need to be ruthless with ourselves, they're all the same. Yeah. And grace is is understanding that my sin is is manageable by God. Mm -hmm. There's nothing I do that makes me completely unacceptable. There's nothing that do that makes me abhorrent. There's mm -hmm. nothing I can do that makes him stop loving me. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't look at me and say, well, you're worse than somebody else. Mm -hmm. He just looks at me as loved. Mm -hmm. And the things I get wrong hurt and, and, and disappoint him. But he doesn't say, well, you're better than this or you're better than yeah. that person. There is, he doesn't see it that way at all. And therefore, it's important that we don't. It's really yeah. important that we don't judge other people. Yeah. It's really important that we don't. Uh, in fact, there's a story, Jesus talks, uh, uh, an encounter where Jesus deals with somebody who's in the temple praying and saying, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like that person over there. And, and Jesus condemns that. So that's yeah. not the attitude. So we, yeah. we mustn't be looking at other people and saying, well, at least I don't do that. Or how can they possibly do this? Uh, another one of the great Bible images is, is of, of, it says you can't look at for a speck in somebody else's eye mm. if you've got a log in your own. Yeah. So we don't judge and we, we rejoice in, in God's equality of love. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure we've talked about this story before, but the woman caught in adultery, you know, dragged in front of the, the whole town. They're all baying for her blood. They want to stone her to death. Uh, and Jesus' response is, you know, which one of you is without sin? You, you go first. Yeah. Uh, and that's so powerful because they all dropped their stones and had to walk away. And, and that, that phrase goes through my head, here by the grace of God go I. Yep. I have my struggles, you have your struggles. It doesn't make any one of us better, mm. that we're just different. Uh, and mm. we're all battling and struggling our way. And I suppose what we want to create are communities of grace and mercy. They're yeah. two words that you love and you talk about a lot. But a community that doesn't judge. Yeah, we pick the pieces up, we help people. We don't condone the things but we don't condemn. Mm. Uh, and there's, there's, a, there's a real difference in that where, where anybody can come and join with us. doesn't matter what you've done. There's a sense of actually you're loved by God and we'll work with you and we'll help you. And that's so key because again, I think, and I've said this earlier, people do feel they condemn themselves. They yeah. do feel I'm not good enough. You might come to church on a Sunday and you look around and oh, they've got their hand in the air and they've just read a Bible verse and they've prayed and oh, they've got it sorted. They don't struggle with anything. They do. Mm. It's just that when they come into this place, they're entering into it and, and they're beginning to connect with God and, and, and want to receive God's love and engage with him. It's not that they're perfect. And I think, again, we need to rewrite the way that we see ourselves in that narrative. And so much of it is about how we see God and how yeah. we see ourselves. It's so crippling. Yeah. But it can be so freeing and so liberating. Mm. Mm. Any other practical things you'd say about self-control? So we've talked, about, uh, we've talked about identifying when and where is, is, is the, the temptation arises and being ruthless to that. We talked about having other people with us. Yeah. Uh, I think... Uh, I would I would go back into the value of just letting Scripture mm -hmm. percolate over us and and being in prayer 
as much as we can and reading scripture and just allowing what the Bible talks about, the transformation of our mind. So the more we're in God's presence, the more we Mm -hmm. seek to worship, to be grateful, to read scripture, to fill our minds with what is good, Mm -hmm. the more it helps us to deal with the things that are bad. So I would say uh, watch as many videos on our website (laughs) as you can. (laughs) Just get into every day having a thought come in from God, read some scripture yourself, pray, watch the streams, go to church, just fill yourself with God's presence yeah. because that has a, a powerful effect. Because at the end of the day, we talked about self-control being a fruit of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. It's about what God's Holy Spirit produces in us. So yeah. we need to be constantly saying, Lord, fill me. Yeah. And we need to be constantly putting ourselves in the place where God is at work in our lives and mm. we're feeding ourselves with scripture, we're feeding ourselves and talking to God and building relationship with him and asking mm. him again and again to fill us. We cannot do this in our own strength. We cannot do it by just determ- turning over a new leaf or a New Year's resolution. Mm. We need to just constantly say, God, uh, help me do this. And I guess the idea of new resolution, I think there's a quote, isn't there, that I think it's quite helpful. What's the difference uh, between a goal and a New Year resolution? A goal is something that you keep striving for even though you've missed. Mm -hmm. A New Year's resolution is something you give up on when you can't do it. And we don't have New Year's resolutions. We say to Jesus, this is my goal. Will you help me do this? And we don't give up when we fail. Mm -hmm. We don't... uh, one of the great pictures is, is of how you and I learn to walk, how people learn to walk. There is no child that doesn't fall over the first time. There is no child that doesn't scrape its knees and need yeah. a plaster. Yeah. And if a child said, well, I can't walk, I give up, mm. then that's really problematic. Mm. It's that you get up and you keep going mm. and you say, Lord, I've got this wrong, I'm sorry. Will mm. you help me tomorrow to get it right? Yeah. And we learn to walk and then we learn to run, and then we learn to dance because we didn't give up when we got it wrong the first time. Yeah. So we need to keep going. Yeah.